exciting stuff. And I, I think people struggle to find anything online where you've been wrong. But France, load shedding. How, I, I think it's been almost two decades now. How do we still have load shedding? How, how is the state incapable of solving this problem? It's the same reason why SAA didn't work out and, and why many municipalities, if you read the most recent stuff from the Auditor General again, are a bit of a, a, a disaster. It's, it's, it's an approach to management that sees the removal of, of competent people and their replacement with people who are less competent and then the pursuit of the extraction of wealth in order to feed cadre deployment networks. That's the formula, three steps. And wherever you apply that formula, you are going to, to have a, a poor result. And that's what's, what happened at, at Eskim as well. The trend line on Eskim, none of this should come as a surprise to anyone. The, 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 the trend line on Eskim's uh, production of electricity, there's a number that electricity people use called the energy availability factor. And it measures what proportion of potential uh, of, of installed capacity is actually put out into the economy as electricity. And I don't know, 10 or 15 years back, the figure for Eskom was over 80%. So of all the power plants that Eskom had, about 80% of that potential energy was actually produced and went into the economy. The rest was had, had broken down or was down for maintenance. So it's 80% 10, 15 years ago. The figure today, I think, is, has now slipped to under 60%, and it's, it's pretty much a straight line. And that, that straight line tells you where things are headed. We have installed capacity today, uh, that's, that's potential, I think, in Eskom, but just over 40,000 megawatts. We've got production of um, just under 25,000 megawatts. I just sort of speak off the top of my head here, but it's close enough. Here's an amazing uh, uh, number. My estimate of this data uh, that, that I followed very closely and, and, and I mean, the electricity production trend lines for you know, well understood is that by, by 2040, if South Africa wishes to aspire to be a high growth emerging market, so economic growth rate of around 5% sustained, the generating shortfall is going to be 40,000 megawatts or thereabouts. It is bigger than the entire generating uh, actual production uh, figure, the availability figure that we see today. To address that, we need to commission an additional 40,000 megawatts over the next 20 years, so ideally starting this morning. Um, doing that in, 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 with regard to two sources of electricity. One is about 20,000 megawatts of wind and solar that, that run in the day, but storage is difficult and expensive. And behind that, this is a new idea. South Africa needs to become the global pioneer of small modular reactor technology. These are small nuclear reactors, much smaller than anything that has uh, to date been thought of as a nuclear power plant. They are an amazing technology. Russia is the global leader in this. It's a 50 year old technology in, in Russia, uh, it comes out of old Russian icebreakers. The first commercial uh, Russian uh, small modular reactor is at Pevek on the East uh, Siberian in a sea, it floats on a barge. And a Russian gold miner has just commissioned uh, four of these things. Hitachi, Toshiba, and uh, Rolls-Royce are amongst uh, 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 Asian Western firms that are pioneering this kind of technology. And what makes it so compelling is that the reactors can be built off-site and shipped to be installed. By the end of this decade, production time from construction to installation should be as short as 36 months. The reactors uh, uh, have fail-safes and the like, which mean that they are extremely safe. 
and do not need the same fallout or containment uh, uh, um, uh, safety sort of uh, measures that might apply to traditional nuclear reactors. They can be retrofitted into existing power plants. Uh, so a coal plant could be retrofitted with a small modular reactor. They can be set up in, in series uh, so that they um, are, you, you're able to scale uh, a delivery. They can be hooked into microgrids. So in distant rural communities or cities might, might commission them directly. And you don't necessarily have to pay for them either. If you are able to agree to um, take off agreements with providers who, who install them then on what's called the BOO principle, build, own and operate. So the, the, the reactor uh, provider builds it, installs it, sets it up and runs it for 20 years uh, without any capital outlay from, from the South African uh, government authority or city based on a takeoff agreement that the power will be bought at a, at a certain rate. If we become the, the global pioneer in this kind of technology, because it's perfectly suited to South Africa, then matched with, with 20,000 megawatts of solar and wind, we have a, um, a good way. Uh, we, 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 we will, by 2040, have the uh, energy infrastructure to sustain very high levels of economic growth. Oh, great. I'm, that sounds fascinating. I hope the climate change fanatics don't try to put an end to that. But Franz, what I don't understand is, I mean, you can literally see the results. The government can literally see the results of their policies in terms of electricity. I mean, the other things might be indirect, but they can see the lights are not working. How is the ideology so powerful? How, 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 does, the one, how does the person not try to think, okay, we need to, tr to try something else. This is not working. Mm -hmm. This is the, the best question. And I'll tell you the answer. It's, it's absolutely understood. In private, if you brief um, senior officials of the government or the ruling party, they're devastated by the by by ESCA, devastated by low growth, the absence of investment, uh, um, uh, fearful, terrified of the political consequences. Absolutely true. Um, the the idea that that you know these are morons, they don't understand the problem, they can't see why someone must tell a lot of business people tell me, can't, can't you tell the government that this is very bad? I say they understand it better than you much better than you, because it's so real for them. But they, they persist with it regardless. If you understand that and, and have no trouble with, with grasping and holding that view and don't feel that you, you have gone mad, can't, no one can think like this. If you can grasp the view you do, you, you're very well positioned to anticipate what comes next for South Africa. It's, it's the story of the scorpion and the frog that sits on a river bank. And the scorpion says to the frog, it wants to cross to the other side. And can the frog give it a lift on its back? And, and the frog says, no, you mad. You'll sting me and I'll, I'll die. And the scorpion says, no, no, but you know, think this through. If I sting you and you sink, I'll drown. It makes no sense. And the frog says, well, you know, that actually think about it that way. You're right. So the frog says, well, hop on. And halfway across the raging torrent, the scorpion stings the frog and the frog says, what the hell was that? And the scorpion says, uh, I'm a scorpion and that's what scorpions do. And if, if at this point you still are unable to understand what the ANC does, then I think you're going to have a very hard time anticipating what comes next. And that, that is the answer to your very important question, because it's on that question and the inability to understand the answer that so many observers of South Africa, investors or the like, remain often confused at the events around them. Grasp that confusion disappears and the uh, road to seeing what comes next becomes very, very clear. 
Yeah, no, no. I I understand the problem. I understand the ideology. I've I've even interviewed Rob Davis, the former Minister of Trade and Industry. And it's just, yeah, it's just so fascinating for me that sort of cognitive dissidence, you, you see the problem in front of you, but you can't seem to understand you need to try something different. I mean, it's just that capitalism is so um, a demon in their eyes, in their minds, they, they can't for one moment consider it. But you're asking someone to do a very difficult thing. It's almost an article of faith, ideology and what you believe in, because it's about the values that you believe are good and right and just. And what you're asking is you're, you're asking people who grew up believing in something to admit that everything they have dedicated themselves to was wrong and that they need to surrender all of that and embrace the ideas that they regarded as, as those of their rivals and adversaries. And it's a hard thing to do um, for, for many people, just too hard, because it's, it's not, it's, it's, not a, 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 it's not just a simple ideology. These, these aren't the flippant beliefs. These, these aren't uh, uh, lightly held. These are deeply held, value-driven. And the conflict between that and, and the facts on the ground and the consequences of those facts uh, bring about the kind of uh, uh, paralysis and results that we see in, in, in the country around us. Now, this is how you can have the, the what will become one of the classic Ramaphosa sort of positions, expropriation that brings about more investment or, or higher wages in a country where the skills base fails to improve that brings about more demand for employment. It's, it's an, this is how we're going to have an austerity program and a sovereign wealth fund at the same time. And, and when you begin to see the pursuit of such against mutually annihilating ideas, what you are actually observing is a very deeply held ideology running into an increasingly deeply held fear of the consequences of the facts as they can be observed by the politician. And the way that plays up is that the confusion and internal inconsistencies deepen and accelerate to the point of the demise of the government or the political party that, that held those contradictions um, in, in its efforts to govern the society around it.